I'll do 12 minutes. I was practicing doing this in five, so it seemed to be totally chill. I could talk twice as slow. Um, but I actually can do a, a little bit more fun demo and, and take you guys through it. So uh, Crowbar, Crowbar is a project that we started because this is Dell written software, Dell started IP, it's an open source project. We develop it in the open, meaning you can watch our commits. Um, and Crowbar was developed because we had a track record of needing to do cloud infrastructure deployments uh, for OpenStack, Hadoop. We did some other projects before that, and they sucked. It was just a huge pain to do it. Um, and what we ended up doing was we wanted to build a project that would allow us to do a full-scale cloud deployment from the bare metal up, and but also get all the infrastructure pieces that were necessary to be successful. So DNS, DHCP, um, NTP, um, network configuration, everything. So when you know when you bring up a cloud, especially in the lab or something like that, you need all you need a full data center infrastructure, but you don't have it. And so what we did was we ended up we actually started with Puppet. Uh, for a couple of reasons, we switched to Chef as our infrastructure tool. So we, we, we wanted to use the recipes and cookbooks. They were part of the community, so we started leveraging that. Uh, that brought us into the DevOps fold, and uh, we have embraced DevOps in a big way um, as part of using this tool because when we look at these cloud infrastructures we're deploying, they're never finished, but they have to be always ready. Classic DevOps philosophy. If you look at OpenStack, if you look at Hadoop, uh, those those packages have these life cycles that expect you to go into a continuous delivery model because of where they are in the life cycle, and we embrace that uh, as part of how we build this. We, it's not just a cloud installer, it's a cloud operations platform. Uh, so what, what we've done is we've really worked very hard to, for this concept of infrastructure late binding, and I'll explain that as we go, and hopefully it'll be really obvious because I, I want to spend time on demo. Uh, what Crowbar is, is it, it uses Chef Server. I'm going to show this. Actually, I sh I'll, I'll flip back and forth to the UI so that you can see these things. Um, this is the GitHub for the open source project. This is the UI for Crowbar. So what I have right here is I have one of my nodes is built, is um, the admin node that runs it. On my laptop, I'm going to build a four-node cloud, okay, out of VMs. Uh, if I was doing this with physical inventory, it would... Um, it would just do the same thing, but on, on physical. What, what I just did was I took the node that I had booted. Uh, I'll show that. So what I so I have my this is my crowbar server. This is the node that I had just booted. What happens when I boot a node up is it goes and I'll do a new one. Uh, it's going to go into a DHCP discovery mode. The crowbar is going to boot a discovery image like this. We're going to install the Chef client on that, and then we're going to go through a hardware provisioning system. So we're going to set the RAID, we're going to set the BIOS, we're going to install the operating system on it. Crowbar today supports Ubuntu and RHEL. It looks like, because of contributions from SUSE, that SUSE is eventually going to come online as another operating system to support, which means that the core components that Crowbar does, where it actually sets up the networking infrastructure, where it sets up all the monitoring and management, and all the components, and DNS, NTP, everything gets set up in the system. And then it starts installing applications. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, we have modularized this. So we start with cookbooks, if you're familiar with chef terms, but we wrap those into something we call bar clamps because they have to include not just the cookbooks, but they also include the packages, the app get installs, or the uh, RPMs that you need to run your application, those are actually bundled so that you can run something without any network access, any internet access at all, make it repeatable, they have UI, they have all sorts of components. But the thing that makes Crowbar really important here is an orchestration system. So we take Chef, which we think does an amazing job of deploying the infrastructure and applications and doing the lookups and things like that so we can cross-reference things, but what it didn't do for us and what we had to add was an orchestration system. So when we go through a deployment, we actually go and, and do the full discovery. So let me jump back to this. What it's doing right now is I'm, I have my first node, that spinning green icon, it means it's actually installing the operating system for that first node. So if I jump back to my VM, this is node one. 
it's literally laying in my Ubuntu operating system. Okay. From there, I'll be able to do a whole bunch of installs on top of that. Uh, this one's going through a discovery process. It's going, it's getting into what we call Sledgehammer, which is that discovery node, and it's going to flip into a uh, loop where I can discover it and then act on it inside of the operating system. You'll see that show up here in just a minute. What we've done is we've taken, and you've heard, you've heard the, me quoted a couple times, the soup versus uh, sandwich concept, these layers. So the way we approach DevOps, the way we approach cloud deployments is by layering things together. And you can pick and choose which layers you want and then build everything up. The layering starts at the RAID and the BIOS levels. It includes the operating system, it includes uh, the name of the system, it includes the networks you're bound to. So every single one of those layers is represented as a bar clamp and is stacked up. This is the full view of all of them. I can just look at the core ones, which are used to bring up a base operating system, right? DNS, logging, we include monitoring. Um, we use Nagios, although Xenos wrote a bar clamp Right, you heard them talking about Crowbar. They've written a bar clamp so that they, you can add Nagi or Zenos into the infrastructure if you want. Uh, Ganglia is in here. Uh, NTP. It is absolutely impossible to stage a multi-node cloud without NTP. It just does not work. It's core. Um, the green lights mean those are already installed. So as the nodes come in. And then we do things like we bring in OpenStack. So we have suites of bar clamps that are application specific. Uh, depending on how far I get in the demo, I'll be able to show you this. Uh, and in this case, to build OpenStack, I actually have to have MySQL. I have to include the uh, centralized authentication, which is called Keystone. I have to have an image server called Glance. I have to have a UI, the dashboard, to allow me to provision things. That before I can, I have to do all that before I can actually build the infrastructure, the service component of OpenStack. Those are all layers, and then I can build them up uh, system by system. I can pick the nodes I want to deploy it on and make everything happen. And we'll get to that in just a minute. All right. I want to do a time check. Good. So let me show you. So that's that's the core of what Crowbar is going to show you and what Crowbar is going to do. This guy is now in this, in this holding pattern. So this node, and one of the things in here is because we were based on uh, Chef, we actually use OHI and we discover huge amounts of data. We display a little bit about it. It's important to note that Chef is running behind the scenes. So Crowbar is really a complementary tool on top of Chef. We do not add a new database. We actually hook into Chef's APIs and we do everything and store all of our data in Chef. So when you see a, a node in Chef, that node is actually the node you're looking at in Crowbar. It's an overlay. It's not a replacement. It's, it's not a side-by-side -side thing. They actually are tightly integrated. Uh, the same thing is true if you look at our cookbooks. Our cookbooks, everything we're going to deploy is in here. All the roles within the system uh, are mapping mapped back. And if you look at the Crowbar UI, you're going to see the roles here are going to map to what, what's available in, in Crowbar. And then you could also see as, as things get set up, we take advantage of the tight integrations with Search to actually set up Nagios or Ganglia or whatever other monitoring things we do. Uh, that includes if we name, create aliases, things like that, we can then inject them into the DNS server and create DNS entries for everything that happens. So the idea here is that we are doing an end-to-end -end discovery of the whole infrastructure. I'm, it's coming up a little slowly. This is, this is this loop state where I'm waiting to be allocated. If I come over here, I take this node, I can choose to allocate it. The allocation step is going to tell Crowbar, hey, it's time for me to go and start deploying this step. The late binding feature, which is really interesting but takes me another 10 minutes to demo, is you don't actually have to do that allocation step here. When I go into my bar clamps over here in OpenStack, if I was going to deploy a MySQL server, we do this in stages so that you have a chance to inspect and tune the configurations before you deploy them. If you create a proposal for a MySQL instance, you're gonna, it'll let you make some choices, but it'll also let you choose which nodes you want to deploy on. So as you go into Picket, right, if you're used to using Chef, you actually have to say this node gets this role. We actually sort of do it the opposite. We want MySQL deployed and we drop a node into that. In this case, it's making a recommendation to pick node one. 
when I make that, and I could switch it if I wanted and do node two, I'm going to pick node one because node one's built. I'll apply here, and what's going to happen is it's going to identify that. It's going to say, hey, I'm going to go in. I can do that deployment on my SQL. Right now, my SQL's queued because that system's not built. This is what's really fun with Crowbar. If I had all these nodes staged and ready, when I pick them, they might be in a holding pattern waiting for me to decide what I want to do. As soon as I choose what they should be, then it builds them. So this is the concept of late binding. If I, wanted, if I took nodes that were just sitting in a holding pattern waiting, and I chose to make them storage nodes like for um, a Hadoop or, a, or a, a Swift or Ceph or something that needed a JBOD configuration, which is a different RAID and BIOS configuration, it would actually make that decision at the time I chose what application to put on the node, which is late binding, rather than having to make all those decisions up front. So and Hadoop's a really good example. So if I wanted to do Hadoop, I'd set the BIOS for a Hadoop node based on JBOD, based on certain optimizations for Hadoop and performance. I would actually set up uh, networking, so I'd set up teamed networks based on certain network configurations. I'd attach them to the correct VLANs so that they need so that those nodes were on the right VLANs for the Hadoop configurations. I'd make all those choices based on it being a Hadoop worker. If I wanted a Hadoop edge, those things actually would need a rated drive. They're going to need different performance characteristics. They're going to be on different VLANs, different networking configurations. What happens is as we go through these bar clamps, all these cookbooks, we actually make these specific decisions based on what your application deployment is, this late binding concept. Um, and so, so what you can see right here is it actually is now picked up. It stopped queuing my SQL and it's decided that spinning circle is actually going in and deploying my SQL on that node. Um, my SQL deploys pretty fast, but I could go through all those things. I'm going to show you what that looks I'm going to show you the sort of logical picture. So what that means is that we're going to go through these, these deployment steps. We're going to be able to repeat the process because we're using Chef under the covers. And what that would look like, I've already set up the admin server. I'm building a cloud controller right now. But you take it through all these steps, you discover it, and then I can bring in more capacity and, and take it through. Because we use Chef, we can search and discover where everything is and then add it and integrate the whole system together. I'm out of time for, for this. But um, we're going to be doing a, a more detailed discussion about it in about 45 minutes. Thanks. I'll give up the floor.